People collect all kinds of stuff. Coins, stamps, old cars, antique beer bottles. That's way too boring for me, so I collect gear up landing videos. And let me tell you, there's no shortage of them out there on YouTube. If there were an Oscar category for filming gear ups, these guys would win, hands down. This was filmed a couple of weeks ago by KOMO News in Seattle, and it's as good as it gets. We'll look at the end game here in a minute, but first, let's consider the technology. This coverage is done by this kind of equipment, gyro-stabilized cameras mounted on helicopters, and it takes both flying skill and operator skill to get a shot this good. Now back to the live action with the airplane on short final. While we're waiting for the touchdown, consider what you're seeing here. Except for the missing nose gear, it looks like a normal landing, and that's the way it should look. What you don't see is the pilot shutting down the engines on short final, but not everyone does it that way. This gear up happened at Daytona Beach a few months ago, and as you can see, the pilot has caged both engines and feathered the props. So in addition to no landing gear, he's now got a 4,000 pound glider. I'll come back to that in a minute. But first, let's talk about gear up landings in general. How often do these things happen? Well, maybe not every day, but they're not rare either. If an airplane has retractable gear, big airplane, little airplane, props and jets, there's a way to land it with the wheels up. I pulled some data from the NTSB website, and over a period of five years, beginning in 2010, I found about 80 gear up landings. But I'm pretty sure not all gear ups are reported, so there could be, what, twice as many? Maybe. You won't find an insurance agent that hasn't had a gear up claim or two, maybe a lot of them. I've researched this subject a couple of times, and the pattern is always the same. A little over half are caused by pilots just forgetting to put the wheels down. You know, you can get busy. Next are the mechanical issues where the gear just won't extend at all, won't extend fully, or one or more of the wheels won't come down. That's about 30%, and that's what happened in the KOMO footage. The nose gear was just hung up. Last are the gear collapses, which account for about 15% of gear up landings. Those often happen out of the blue, sometimes because a bad landing put a lot of side load on the gear, causing it to fail. It's usually just one gear leg, not all three. A lot of these are also due to poor maintenance. Gear systems need a lot of TLC to work correctly and reliably, and some of them just don't get it. If there's a poster child for gear up landings, that would be the Cessna 210. Nearly one in five gear up landings involve the 210. There are probably two good reasons for this. One is that there are a lot of 210s flying. Nearly 10,000 were built. Second, the 210 has a complex gear system that works well, but it requires careful maintenance. Almost half of the gear up landings in 210s involve mechanical issues. Here's an interesting comparison. More than 17,000 Bonanzas of various models have been built, but they're underrepresented in gear up landings. Only 5% of gear ups involve bonanzas of any model. I attribute that to a simpler gear system that's more tolerant of poor maintenance. In most of these videos, after landing, the occupants usually unask the thing like snakes on a plane. They do that presumably because they're worried about fire. Fair enough. But fire almost never happens. In years of reviewing these incidents, I found only a couple of post-slide fires. One actually destroyed the airplane. Gear up landings in large airplanes usually produce a lot of sparks, and while fire doesn't always happen then either, there have been some spectacular examples, like this FedEx MD-11 that caught fire in Fort Lauderdale after a gear collapse. In little airplanes, fire is just a little less likely. That doesn't mean you should hang around in the cabin, but don't break a leg trying to get out either. It's okay to look around for your sunglasses. And even though there was no apparent fire in this gear up, the airplane got a squirt of foam anyway. I hope they douse the interior too, so the owner can at least get some fresh upholstery out of the deal. Sadly, I have no video of inadvertent gear up landings because they're always a surprise. No one is hanging around runways waiting for them to happen, least of all me. But inevitably, when pilots were asked why they didn't put the wheels down, they explained that something distracted them from their normal routine say looking for another airplane in the pattern or turbulence and in two cases an unexpected tower assigned right base so if you fly retractable 
be on guard against distractions. In my flying career, I've personally witnessed two gear up landings. Thankfully, as an observer, not a participant, one was an unintentional gear up of what else, a Cessna 210. Later on, the pilot told me he had been distracted by an airplane that cut him off in the pattern. He said two things stood out about the experience. One, the rollout was really short, and second, it's a much shorter step to get out of the cockpit when the wheels are folded up in the fuselage. He bashed his head on the wing getting out. Now some thoughts about the unavoidable gear up landing if the wheels absolutely, positively won't come down. Earlier I mentioned that shutting down the engine or both engines on a twin isn't the best idea. Here's why. I think most pilots do this in an attempt to save the engines and maybe the props. But the reality is that unless you're nervy enough to bump the props horizontal with the starter, props are going to get trashed anyway. Actually, it looks like the pilot in this gear up did exactly that. But whether the engine is running or not, both Continental and Lycoming recommend that the engines be torn down and inspected if the prop has been damaged. Your insurance company is going to pay for that, including replacing any parts damaged by the landing. In this gear collapse incident, although the pilot may have got one prop out of the way, it looks like the props just get bumped on touchdown. You wonder if the insurance company is going to forego the inspection just to save 30 grand. I'm going to guess no on that one. Shutting down the engines complicates things because you're adding difficulty to the already stressful task of landing with no wheels, and you're doing that to, what, save your insurance company some money? Makes no sense to me. Also, as shown here, the airplane will glide a lot better with the engines caged, and that could result in an overshoot in a crash instead of an uneventful slide down the runway. It's just better to keep the engines running in case you need to go around or otherwise maneuver. Just land normally and pull the mixtures to idle at touchdown, and when you're sure the runway is made, have your insurance agent's number on speed dial. Given the choice of landing on pavement or grass, some pilots pick the grass on the theory that it will do less damage to the airplane and reduce the chance of fire. But as I've mentioned, fire is a rarity and turf can actually do more damage because the airplane can dig into soft ground, tearing up the belly and the nose panels. You can also hit hidden obstacles like drainage dishes and airport lighting. I think it's just better to stay on the pavement and accept the slide. Everyone who flies retracts has a different way of making sure the gear is down. The standard gum check, gas, undercarriage, mixture prop is as good as any. To that, I add my own. On short final, I say out loud, final landing check, the gear is down. Then I check not just the handle position, but any mechanical down indicators, including the green lights. A lot of these gear up landings are instructor induced, which is to say they happen while training to handle gear emergencies. To avoid making a mess in that situation, when training anything to do with the landing gear where a landing may be planned, I keep my hand on the gear handle switch the entire time as a reminder to make no kidding sure whether the wheels are up or down. One last thing. If you're ever faced with an unavoidable $50,000 slide down the runway, don't forget to smile. Someone's probably filming it. For AvWeb, I'm Paul Bertarelli. Thanks for watching. In the description below, you can see links to some of the videos I credit.